to the podcast of Broadway Baptist Church in Lexington, Kentucky, and the preaching of Pastor Daniel Osborne, a biblical church centered on Christ. Jeremiah chapter 17, beginning from verse 5 to 8. And the topic actually is, in whom do you trust in? In whom do you put your trust? You know, when it comes to trust, a lot of people actually, they have certain things that they put their trust in, they put their confidence in. Some people put their trust in their money because they have a lot of money in the bank. So they have all their trust vested on that money because they believe that at any time they can reach out to their money and do whatever they want to meet their needs. Some people put their trust on their spouse. Some people put their trust on their job. Some people put their trust on their world. Some people put their trust on their culture. Some yet, yet some people put their trust on tradition. Some people also put their trust on occultism. Some belong to occultic groups and, and they put their trust in it. While some yet put their trust on idols, the worshiping of idols. You know, back in our culture in Africa, we have a lot of people worship idols. They have so many kinds of idols. Don't get me wrong, even in this country also, there are some idol worshippers, so many kinds of uh, idol worshiping in this country. As a matter of fact, my exposure working at the airport, I see it a lot. People carry gods and things like that, and they say it's their god, and so they put their trust in it. So mankind has fallen from the beginning, from the creation of time. We have defocused from our God. Instead of us looking unto him, we tend to look at the things of the world. And there is a problem. Anytime there is a disconnection with our God, then there is a problem. Because when we look at the, uh, the, the, the Ten Commandments, when God actually gave his children, he says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any grieving image. So you, sh- you should not make any idol. You should not worship idol, any idol. Because he said, in, even in the uh, first uh, commandment, he says that uh, 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 the first commandment, God says that, I think he, he put, he said, I am the Lord thy God. Something like that. I'm just trying to paraphrase here. But man has defocused. We have defocused. Instead of looking unto God, we turn now to look for solution, for trust and hope elsewhere. Now, this message actually is not by coincidence. We are, during the, we are in the time of election. And during this time, as a matter of fact, you hear people say a lot of things. People put their trust in this particular candidate. You see, they would talk very good about this candidate. They would talk so well about this particular candidate. And they would trash the other candidate. And on the other hand, some other people would put their trust also in this particular candidate. And the trust, they would trash the other candidate. People put their trust even on politicians. I asked a question a few days ago on some friends who were talking about, I, I don't put my mind in politics. But I, I, the, the, the friend made a comment about, Uh, a particular candidate, then I I asked the question, and I was very intentional with my question. I said, tell me something. From the creation of the United States of America, has there been any president who has ever solved all the problems in this country? There was a pause. I said, yeah, that's what I meant. Because the Bible says, anybody who put his trust in man, you are cursed, as we are going to see in this passage this evening. If you put your trust in a particular candidate, thinking that hope is going to come from this candidate, thinking that salvation, or the good that is can, this particular candidate is going to fix the whole thing in the country, then you are cursed, as we are going to see in a few minutes. Now we are going to see the, the tribe of Judah, how because of their persistence in sin, persistent in idol worship. They put their trust in idols and, 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 and because they put their trust in idols, they didn't have attention unto the Lord. And it was so, so concerning unto the Lord because these are God's people. Every child of God ought to look unto the Lord for your hope. As a matter of fact, Psalms 121 says, it says that I look up to the hills where my help cometh my help come from. My help cometh from the Lord our God, the maker of heaven and earth. So as children of God, our trust is supposed to be invested only in God and on God alone. Nothing else. Not mortal man. No mortal man is able to fix the economy of America. No mortal man is going to bring the morals back into this country. No mortal man is going to make things to go as straight, as good as it's supposed to go 
But there is one person that if we put our trust in him, then through him he's going to make things better for us, and that is Jesus Christ. And that is who I'm trying to present to us this evening. That is a time that we need to defocus. Stop putting trust in humans. Stop putting your trust in particular politicians. Because those politicians, all of them, they have their own backs. They all have their own closet of, of, of skeleton. If you look at them, all of them have issues. There is no one that is perfect. That tells us that we need to put our trust but in God. Instead of looking onto man and depending on man to fix things for us. So, in this section this evening, from verse 1 up to verse 4, the Lord expresses his anger over Judah because of her persistent sin. These people, actually, they were so drowning in sin that their passion and, and zeal to sin, it, it, it's chiseled in their hearts that the people, is like they can't do without sinning. They have this urge to sin against God. And the kind of sin that actually they were, the things that they were doing, which was really displeasing unto the Lord, was idol worshiping. There is this God called the I Asherah, Asherah, which is a fertility God. As some of these people, actually, what they did is, so they have altars of pagan gods which were elevated in high places on top of the hills and mountains in Judah, such that every time when you see in the land, everywhere you have this elevation of gods and statues and everywhere, and that is what the people was worshipping. The Bible says, God has given his book, he says that, Thou shall have no other gods before me. As a matter of fact, God should take the priority over our lives. People have different gods. So these people, they vested their time and they vested all their effort and they vested all their passion in, 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 uh, in worshipping all these gods, which actually was opposing to what God has told them in his command. So Jeremiah predicts God's impending judgment to Judah. So Judah is going to relinquish all her inheritance because she chose to put her trust on idols instead of putting that trust on God. And let me tell us this evening, God cannot be mocked. No one day. God can never ever be mocked. If we think that we can put our trust in men, mortal men for that matter, if we think that we can put our trust in a particular thing, whether it is money, whether it is our job, whether it is whatsoever, anything that takes the place of God in our lives, if we think that we can survive by doing that, the Bible this evening is telling us that you are cursed. No Christian should dare put God behind. God should be the first. He is the first. He is our priority in everything because he is our creator. God created everything. He has the power. He has the ability. He has the capacity to change and to transform the world in a way that pleases him. So how dare we as human things that we can put our trust in the things that were even made by God and think that, it, and we, 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 we think that things are going to go well for us. So God gives Judah two options here. The first option is in verse, verse 5. This is what he says. He said, this is what the Lord says. Cursed is the person who trusts in mankind. He makes human flesh his strength and his, his heart turns from the Lord. Verse 6. He will be like a juniper in the Arabi. He cannot see when the good comes, but dwells in the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land where no one lives. The person who trusts in the Lord, those confidence, whose confidence indeed is in the Lord, is blessed. He will be like a tree planted by water, instead of its roots out towards a stream. It doesn't fear when heat comes, and its foliage remains green. It will not worry in a year of drought or uh, 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 seas producing fruit. So these are the two choices, the two options that God gave to Judah through the prophet Jeremiah. He said that either a curse on those who put their trust in mankind, that is verse 5, or blessings on those who put their trust in God, that is in verse 7. So we have a choice here. We have a choice in this life. Either you are for God or you are not for God. There is no standing in between or betwixt. You either give in all and all unto God 
or you give it all and all unto Satan. And there is a consequences of whichever choice you choose. So God is addressing the situation here by giving his children the option to choose. Because Ezekiel tells us that it is not in God's plan that anyone should perish. He says, son of man, why will you die? Turn away from your wicked ways and live. Choose life and live. And this is the same situation where God is presented here, presenting to us options. Because God does not want, want anyone uh, to perish. So he said, curse on those that put their trust in mankind. I want us to quickly turn to Psalms chapter 1. Turn to Psalm chapter 1. Let's see the first verse, verses. Psalms 1 actually has a correlation with uh, this uh, Psalms, uh, with uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, these verses that we are reading. This is what Psalms 1 says, How happy is the one who does not walk in the, in the advice of the wicked, or stand in the pathway with sinners, or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction, and he meditates on it day and night. He is like a tree planted beside the flowing streams that bears its fruit in its season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does prospers. And if you look at what he says here, he says that uh, in verse, uh, verse 4 to 6 here on this our passage, verse 4 says, So verse 5 says, this is what the Lord says. Okay, no, no this is not verse, uh, let me see. Verse 7, yeah, this is verse 7. Verse 7 says, the person who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence indeed is in the Lord, is blessed. And then goes to verse 8, says, it will be like a tree planted by water. Just what the psalm, psalm is saying here. That person will be like a tree planted by water. Now, when we trust in the Lord, the tree that is actually referring here is, you, you'll be like that tree that is planted by water, and the water is right to the word of God. You'll be, you'll be planted to the word of God, and you'll be nourished by the word of God in and out of season. When you are nourished with the word of God, no matter what wind, it cannot take you, it cannot, it, it cannot rip you off, because your foundation is standing on the water. Just imagine a tree that is planted by the riverside. In and out, the, the, as a tree is planted by the riverside, the roots, they go right deep deep close to the water. They are, dry, they are sucking nutrients from the water and furnishing the fruit with, they, are, they, they plant with, so that if during the dry season, you can make a quick comparison between the plant that is standing beside the water and the plant that is somewhere far. You see that the, the plant that is planted beside the water is more healthy, it's more green, and even more fruitful than the tree that is not closer to, because that tree that is planted by water, in times of drought, that tree shall be standing. And this is what the Word of God says, that anybody who trusts in the Lord, anybody who put his or her trust in the Lord, you will be like that tree that is planted by a river, whereby you will be stepping from the Word of God, tapping from the Word of God all the time, such that when evil days are coming, when the trials are coming, when the temptations are coming, you have your foundation very solid because you have that connection with the Holy Spirit where you tap all time from the Word of God. There is no disconnection. You are connected with the Lord in and out of season. And that is why we want to remind ourselves that when we trust in the Lord, I'm not trying to say here that when you trust in the Lord, everything will be so good. No, that's not what I'm saying. When you trust in the Lord, the Lord has enough doses to supply even when you are going through difficulties. When you trust in the Lord, God has scripture passages which will really encourage you, will elevate you, will still keep your faith, holding strong on Him. And that is what makes the difference. The Word of God makes a difference to anybody who put their trust in the Lord. Because you study the Word of God even when you're sad. You study the Word of God when you're happy. You study the Word of God when you're broke. You study the Word of God when you're sick. You study the Word of God. You keep on studying the Word and it builds in you. That is how your faith increases. Increases in a, in a way that you find yourself even floating in the midst of all trials and difficulties. Because you are constantly being nourished by the Word of God. Because you put your trust in God. And that is what we are preaching tonight. That brothers and sisters, put your trust in God. Amen? 
We need to put our trust in God. It's not that type of shallow trust that you put, you hold on to the stick or you hold on to the Lord and then you, dis- you turn away your side. You, you see that when this way is not going as quickly as you want, then you let it go and try to embrace. No, no, no. That is not the type of trust. Trust God even when things don't go the way you want. Trust God even when the outcomes of the things that you are looking for does not turn out that way. Keep on trusting God because it pays to trust God. Amen? So the second option that he gave, he said, curse. The person who does not put his trust in the Lord, that person is already cursed. That is verse 7. So therefore, if anybody here has been putting his or her trust on a particular person, thinking that that person is a savior in your life, whatever the thing is, whatever the situation is, if you have been thinking and putting your trust only in man, I just want you right now that try to flip, change it. Because the Bible says that if you put your trust in man, you're already cursed. Because God wants every attention to him. He's a jealous God. God does not want to share his glory with anybody. He's our maker. He's our savior. He's our everything. Why on earth should we let our God be on one side and then we choose to embrace something else? So God's anger was on Judah. And he said the second thing he told them is that they should put their trust and it's cursed to that person who does not put their trust in the Lord. And we see here when verse 5 says that this is what the Lord says, that curse is the person who does not trust in mankind. Who put his trust in mankind? He makes human flesh his strength and his heart turns from the Lord. He will be like a juniper in the Araba. He cannot see when good comes but dwells in the parched places in wilderness, in a salt land where no one lives. And let us see what Psalms, the second part of Psalms, verse 4 and verse Psalms. Psalms chapter 1 verse 4 says that the wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in, in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. So those who, do, as a matter of fact, so those who do not put their trust in the Lord, they are the wicked. And, 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 and we see how the Bible describes those who... Do not put their trust in the Lord. You'll be like a patched land. You'll be like a desert. What this is saying is that there's a, there's a big distinction with the one who trusts the Lord because the one, on one hand, the person who puts the trust in the Lord, he's planted like that tree. He's like that tree planted by the river where he sucks nutrients in and out of season where even when drought, they are still flowing. When, when problems come, they are, still, they are still flourishing. But on the other hand, uh, people who don't trust in the Lord, they don't have that support. They don't have that flourishing, the things that will build them up, let them move them up. They don't have it. You know, you, you, we, 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 we can't put our trust in things that are made by God and, th- and, and, and be, still believe that those things will help us. They will not help us. Our help comes only from the Lord. We can't put our trust from the things that are being made and then the maker now we abandon him. So it will not go well with us if we don't put our trust in the Lord. That is what he's saying. We can't gain God's favor if we abandon him. We can't gain God's blessing if we really get him to the back. We can't gain God's favor in our lives if we make God a second class, make him a second class in our lives while we trust other things. And that is our challenge this evening. I'm going to ask this question to all of us. Who do you put your trust in? In whom do you invest your trust in? We have been going through issues in life. We have been going through situations in life. And uh, the question is, who do you put your trust in? What I know is that the God we serve cannot lie. He cannot fail. He has never failed. Those who put their trust in him shall never be put to shame. That is what the Bible says. For those who put their trust in the Lord shall never, ever be put to shame. So will you mind this evening trying to trust God, give him that confidence again, and put your trust in him? Because all the other things that besides God, every other thing besides him, it is not going to help us a bit. It will not help us. It will lead us even to destruction. But when we put our trust in the Lord, he says we are blessed. You are blessed. Just putting your trust in the, in the Lord alone, you are blessed. But if you take other route and don't take God's route to trust in him, then you are cursed. And if God says you are cursed, I don't know who is able to cleanse up your curse. It is really tough, right? But that is the truth. That is the truth. So 
God loves us, and that is why he's given us this choice. And that's why he was giving Judah this choice, because God did not want them to perish. God, as a matter of fact, he sees them that they are going to the wrong direction. They are going in the wrong direction. Then he said, these people, and he tells them, he brings them this choice. He said, choose here. Listen, if you continue to go like this, and you don't put your trust in me, just know that you are cursed. But if you turn around, if you turn around and look unto me, I will, I will, I will show mercy unto you, and I will, I will hug and embrace you, and you will be blessed. I want us to pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for your word. And uh, We are humans. We have our own weaknesses and own limitations. And uh, we want to declare that there is none like you. You are God who is so truthful, so faithful, and uh, I want to believe you tonight that, God, you can turn things around on our favor and our behalf to glorify your name. Lord, thank you for this message, dear Lord, and this praise. If there is anybody who has ever, for any reason, put their trust, oh God, in anything than you, Lord, may your spirit convict that person tonight, and they may they be able to change and uh, humble and confess and, and come to you, oh God, and, and, and trust in you and, and see how you're going to direct their lives. Thank you so much, Evelyn, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.